Okay. All right. Awesome. So yeah, today uh, our main focus is going to be how to use CodeMonkey for teachers. Why is it important for te teachers to uh, have the opportunity to be able to utilize CodeMonkey? Um, and we'll just go ahead and jump straight into it. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. All right. Do, 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 do. All righty. Yeah. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Molly, you can see it. Excellent. Okay. Perfect. Yep. yep. Awesome. Um, and Lauren, Amy, uh, Quinzang, have any of you had the chance to look at some of our curriculum um, online, maybe utilizing our free trial? Is this looking all new to everyone? Yeah, I'm on the free trial and I've been looking at Code Monkey Junior specifically for some preschoolers. Gotcha. Okay. Amy, anything on your end? Usually it's like a quick look and unit. New for you as well. Okay, perfect. So we'll just start here from the beginning. Um, so right here for some of our younger students, kindergarten, first, second grade, we start them off with block-based coding. Um, this is really our bread and butter for CodeMonkey. We started 12 years ago. We focused on block-based and text-based for um, elementary school students. We're currently providing CodeMonkey for K through eight. We even have some high schools that use us as well because of um, we do offer Python. But what separates CodeMonkey from other platforms such as you know, code.org, for instance, is the way that we're introducing these topics. So you can't just jump straight ahead uh, into text-based coding or into the 20th lesson within BlockBase. You have to prove your conceptual understanding. And each one of those lessons come fluidly so students aren't getting stuck, right? They're having fun, they're engaged. And I'll show you what this looks like here quickly. So CodeMonkey Jr., as we can see here, if it wants to load, this is going to be challenge number five. All right, I'm going to mute that. And as you can see here, if you were in kindergarten or first grade and you jump straight into challenge number five, you wouldn't know what to do, right? This looks a little bit advanced. Uh, and again, this is challenge number five. So students wouldn't see this. They would first start off something very basic, challenge number one, uh, drag and drop block base introduction. And then each one of these lessons, we're gonna introduce um, a new piece to block coding. And our goal is to get students into actually writing code um, as quickly as possible. And I'll show you what this looks like on a higher level here. So we're gonna jump into our um, text base. Whoa. Here we go. All right, so this is called Coding Adventures Part One. And this is where elementary school students are actually gonna be writing code. As you can see here, this looks very advanced, similar concept. This is challenge number 41. Um, we do have these tutorial videos, but we notice most students probably aren't gonna watch the tutorial, right? So uh, we're gonna start students at a very basic introduction, especially when they're moving right from block into text. And I'll show you what this looks like here. So we have a little animation. We'll skip that just for time. Again, we do have our, our first steps tutorial here, step 15. It's pointing at uh, run, so we'll go ahead and click it. All right. <laughs> We got that correct. We're not sure why. We just clicked run. And now it's telling us, hey, you can change the amount of steps. We'll click run. It's not correct. It says use step 15. We're still not sure why, but we're going to go ahead and change that to 15. 
We've accomplished that. And now we have our tutorial video. Again, let's pretend that we don't wanna watch that. We'll click okay. And now if you look on your left-hand side, you'll see this animation built right in telling us to grab that ruler. Uh, and that's gonna tell us how many steps that we need to make. So again, it's very uh, self-paced for the students hands off for the teachers. And now we know this is going to be 20 steps. So this is just uh, an example of how our program works. CodeMonkey was created with the understanding most teachers don't have a coding background and they don't need to for this to work. Um, although we do have a ton of teacher resources as well, I'd say it's kind of a 50-50 split. So some teachers, they wanna utilize these resources and learn along with their students, or maybe they took a class in college, they wanna brush up, well, we have that available. So we have uh, tons of lesson plans um, and we also have coding concepts, media and graphic, and most importantly, the solutions. So we have the answers um, to every single question on our platform. So I know you mentioned um, the Code Monkey Junior earlier. Well, we can go right here. We can say, hey, there's a few students that are stuck on challenge number 15. Well, as a teacher, we can click right into it um, and now we're able to see exactly how to solve so we'll go back here so as a teacher um, the teacher dashboard is obviously very important um, and here we can choose our specific class we'll go with uh, mr allen's class and now at a bird's eye view, we can see all of our students, we can see their progress, we can look at proficiency overall. Um, and then we also have our grade book. You can assign quizzes if you'd like, um, that will expire at a certain time. They have to complete it, let's say by the end of April for Code Monkey Junior part one, for instance. And then we can see exactly, um, how they're scoring there. We can do letters, we can do numbers, we can do percent. Uh, and then your quizzes are right here if you do want to assign those. Um, so as we mentioned, Coding Adventure, we can choose an end date. You can try it yourself if you'd like. Uh, if we go back to progress, you can also click on a specific student. So let's see, we want more information on Dan. Well, with one click, now we can see how much time they spent, again, their proficiency, how many solutions, how many courses they've started, challenges, games, uh, and the course progress. Here we can choose a specific area and do it that way. And then we can export the data, the data file. Uh, and then we can also limit progress here. So that's a question we get all the time is, hey, so do students just get on and they just play as far as they can go? Not necessarily, we can limit that progress, have students focus on a specific topic, and then we can add that quiz if we would like. So what questions do you all have uh, so far? If any, if any, it's okay if we don't. Nothing? All right, Molly, is there anything that, uh, you've, that you'd like to add here on the teacher dashboard? Uh, no, no. Okay. Um, another important piece is we integrate with a variety of SSOs. So if you're using ClassLink, Google Classrooms, uh, even Clever, um, we do have the opportunity for you to, to roster even a full integration with the site license um, with Clever, just to make that a very seamless process for you. In addition, um, we're offering professional development and that's with one of our CodeMonkey professional development specialists. Um, why is that important? Well, we know each school, each district, uh, sometimes each classroom is gonna be different as far as what you're trying to accomplish. So we wanna discuss, hey, how can we optimize CodeMonkey's features and functionalities to meet your specific goals and objectives? So you'll have a preliminary phone call and then we'll have a 60 minute webinar with the specialist, with your teachers or administrators um, to talk about all of those details. In addition, have a customer experience manager, the duration of your subscription. So when you need support, you don't have to go and, and potentially wait 48 hours for an email response. You do have that one-to-one that -one, um, support. 
So whether it's questions with rostering or just about some of our curriculum in general, um, you do have that dedicated customer experience manager uh, as well as Molly and I. So kind of the full package. Um, is there anything else that you guys would like to discuss here today? I have a question, if you don't mind, about um, getting students logged in. Um, I noticed under the students tab, you have the print student login cards. Um, and when I, do you see that from your experience, especially with younger students, do teachers just post that link to like a Google Classroom or a Seesaw or some sort of um, system so that students can quickly access that and then use their login? Do they create QR codes? What have you kind of found? Yeah, Molly, what do you think is the most popular? Yeah, if you want, um, Tyler, if you want to click on the students tab um, on, yep. So Lauren, where you were referring to, you have the print student login card. So with that, it's going to print your class roster with your student's uh, username or login information as well as their password. So if you wanted to go that route, you'd print it out and then you'd cut out each card and give that to their stu uh, to your students so that they can keep that and refer to each time that they are logging in. If you're doing the classroom login URL, then that is something that you would put up on your whiteboard um, or post somewhere and then students would go to that URL directly and then log in um, with their own username or passwords that they either have saved on their computer or that they've memorized. Uh, for younger students, um, using a simple username um, and very simple password is what we would recommend if you are not using single sign-on, such as their Google email addresses or Clever. Um, and then, as you can see here, if you are using a username and password, you also have the ability to reset passwords for students. So if they don't remember their password or if maybe the password they've set up is just a little too tricky for them, you can reset it to a simpler password that will make it easier for them. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> um, another feature here, thank you, Molly, is our admin dashboard. Um, so we typically will have just one admin, but I believe, Molly, you can have a couple admins now. That's a new feature. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Um, so here, if you were one of the admins or the admin, um, this would be the area where you can look at everything as well. Um, all of your schools, um, active students, past six weeks, and then we can click the teachers tab um, and look at all the teachers. And then here, if you have multiple schools, we can add a school um, and then also add your classrooms um, or upload a classroom. Um, and then you can add co-teachers too. Um, and then we have our assignments tab. And now we can see for each of these schools or classrooms, uh, well, you can filter it by teacher, classroom, or school. And we can see exactly what's being um, assigned to each classroom, teacher, or school. And then we can edit that um, and assign or, or unassign all. So offers you the flexibility from that perspective. Um, one piece I did want to mention on the courses, which is really exciting. This is something that's been added, um, I don't know, maybe the past six months or so. We wanted to be more all-encompassing when it comes to computer science in general to meet the state standards. So we're CSTA aligned um, and we are not just coding. So we are offering digital literacy. This is targeted towards really third through sixth grade. Um, and then we also have our Dodo Does Math, as you can see. So this is specifically focusing on distances, angles, multiplications. We also have a mini course. So it's completely up to the teacher. We see this used as um, maybe a week every two months or a month out of the year. We're going to focus specifically on math or digital literacy. So it's broken down into um, two pieces here. So we have digital use, which is roughly a semester long and digital citizen citizenship, which is another semester. So students can use this year after year, and not necessarily run out of material. Um, why is this important? Well, digital use, as you can imagine, this is gonna focus on um, 
you know, what's the difference between tablets and desktops and um, uh, keyboard and typing component, even hardware, software, browsers, and then the digital citizenship is going to focus more on, hey, um, how can I be a good person on the internet, really? So, or as it's phrased, how to thrive as a digital citizen. So most importantly, I feel is our cyberbullying component here. Um, and again, this is third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade students, just because there is a um, specific reading comprehension um, limit there. So just wanted to point that out. That has been a very uh, popular addition to our platform. Uh, and this is available for, doesn't matter if you have just a small classroom license or a district-wide implementation, this is going to be available um, for everyone. So. All right. Any other questions? No? Okay. Well, thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. Uh, again, this is will be saved, and I can email it over to you all if you'd like to look back at it. Um, you'll also have my email and Molly's. If you have any further questions, we're happy to assist. Always happy to jump on another call. Um, and if you do have an interest for next school year, happy to provide quotes. Again, anything you all need. So thank you very much for your time. And uh, we hope to engage with you all again soon. Bye. Bye, everyone.